What's up everybody, this is BS for Build. I'm Chris, it's time to celebrate. We're getting close to 100,000 subscribers and to celebrate we're doing a BS for Build mini series where we're gonna rebuild something in just three episodes and it's gonna be awesome. So I got on a group text with the guys, I text Adrian, uh, Jeff and Eric and we all got in a group text together and we were like, what, what should we do? What do we do for this episode? What do we do for this series to celebrate? And we all kind of came to the same conclusion. The weather's turning around here in Oregon. We got a lot of water. Let's build a boat, man. B is for boat action. So, I've picked us up a boat. Boats are notoriously hard to uh, back into garages, but I can, I'll figure it out. And uh, I'm gonna back this boat in here so we can get started working on it. Stay tuned. for BMW is for boat. Our very first boat. All right, so I know what you guys are thinking. Probably a couple things. First, uh, this doesn't look very much like a boat. I'll get into that later. Secondly, I thought you sold this car. Correct. As with a couple things that we sold on this car, uh, the buyer didn't pay for it. So the guy that won the eBay auction didn't pay for the car and he said, hey, I can't pay for that car, sorry. So I was like, great. Uh, so rather than keep spamming Instagram and try and resell it and stuff, I thought like, you know what, the motor, transmission, clutch, they're all so good. I'm just going to keep the car and I'm going to hang on to it. Four days later, we realized it's BS for boat time and we got to build a boat. And I was like, let's build the car into a boat. So that's right. That's what's happening. We're building an amphibious floating car boat thing. This series is going to be very fast, very unsafe, very entertaining, not very much how to, but more just us doing. And uh, hopefully there will be, Eric will for sure be in it, Adrian will for sure be in it. Jeff might be able to come down. He's working in a different city, it's kind of far away, but I really hope he can join us. So Jeff, if you're watching, this is me saying, come out here and join us. So we have seven days uh, to build this car up and then we're floating next Sunday. So today's Saturday, we're floating next Sunday. I'm gonna drive this car into a lake and it better float. Let's get started. All right, first thing we gotta do is serious weight reduction. We gotta get every little piece of weight of this car off that we possibly can because the less it weighs, the more it floats. That's just science. So anyways, um, glass. I'm gonna go ahead and try and take the glass out rather than breaking it uh, because I'd like to give it to some other BMW owner that might need new glass. So um, I'm gonna try and get all the glass out of this car that I can without breaking it. All right, I got everything out of the door, all the door mechanisms. There's no more door latching mechanism, so that's, that's just how that goes. Um, and, but the glass is still in here because the glass won't slide out. I've installed windows, I just, I've never um, uninstalled one. So I'm just gonna leave it like that for the time being. And uh, when I have, I, there's a tool that I need that I don't have. And when I get that tool, I'll unscrew a couple bolts on the bottom and that'll slide right out. Uh, I tried to break it with a hammer, but that, that was a fail. I don't know why it's so strong. Anyway, so I'm gonna move over to this rear quarter glass. All right, door glass is removed. Uh, rear quarter glass is removed on both sides. Next thing I wanna do is remove this glass, which is using that little wire saw thing that you guys have seen before. But first, I gotta remove this stuff. I keep cutting myself on it. This is a very sharp corners, and uh, it's gotta go anyways. So I'm gonna undo our handiwork on these bad boys. Back, back, back from the dead. Rear window is out. 
that was pretty simple. Uh, I think it's one of those things, the more times you do it, the easier it gets. So I just, uh, you know, got it out of there without too much trouble. The next thing that we're gonna do, I'm very excited about. I can barely contain myself. Uh, I'm gonna cut the roof off this car. That's right, we're going full convertible. Um, I'm gonna grab the reciprocating saw, I'm gonna cut right here behind me, and I'm gonna cut up here, and I'm gonna cut over there, and I'm cutting the damn roof off. Here we go! Hell yeah. The roof has been cut. It was not the cleanest cut in the world, but I don't think it's gonna matter in the long run. People talk about the right tool for the job, man. Reciprocating saw, definitely the right tool for that job. Let's see if I can hit some light on this. Pulled all the sunroof controls out and just blasted right through there. Good times. On the other side, so what's gonna happen is we're gonna see this gap in the door uh, start to get smaller as the car basically bends in the middle um, so on the other side I, I threw a jack underneath there because you got this you got this structure that's coming around here and that helps the car stay straight and the body stay straight other other than that all you have is the bottom uh, floor pan really holding the car together um, so what we're gonna eventually do is weld up this crack for the doors but until then I've got a jack on the other side kind of supporting the car from underneath like right around here um, that way it's less likely to want to kind of taco in on itself so, I cut the A-pillar on the other side, I'm gonna cut the A-pillar over here, and then I'm gonna actually pay attention to what I'm doing and cut a nice cut between here and here. We're back from the dead. All right guys, roof is completely cut off. Now the hard part is I gotta figure out how to lift it and get it out of the shop, or at least off the car. Uh, this will be tricky, because I, I don't want to get in the car and put too much pressure on it, again, because I don't want to bend it quite yet. Oh, Jesus. It's not really that heavy, it's just a lot of sharp metal. Where's Jeff, guys, where's Jeff? Where's Jeff Cummings? I'm thinking the same thing right now. Where's Jeff? <laughs> See you later, Roof! All right, so one thing we for sure need to check is that the car still starts. So we cut through a lot of wires everything that ran along the roof line through here, cut through some wires back there and back here. So I'm gonna go ahead and plug the battery back in and let's double check that we can still start the car. Uh, before I get too out of hand, continuing. Awesome. While well, I was at lunch, I ran and grabbed the socket set that actually fits onto these metal uh, mounting brackets that the glass is on. So hopefully I can take this off. Um, if I can't, I'll just go ahead and break the glass and uh, just shop back it out of here. But I think I can do it. So I'm gonna try and do it the proper way and pull it off. Voila! I really can't believe I was able to remove all the glass from this car without breaking any of it. Ooh, pretty cool. The next thing I'm gonna to wanna to focus on for what we're doing is to relieve a little bit of the stress from right under the door jam as far as the frame's concerned. So like we talked about, the car lost a lot of its structural rigidity uh, right about here because all you have really keeping the car rigid is the transmission tunnel and the body acts as kind of a, a straight thing that won't wanna crease in the middle. But other than that, if you were to put a lot of stress in this area, the car's gonna to start to taco. That's why, well, not really taco, but it's gonna to start to bend like this. Um, that's why you can't just cut the roof off any car you want and create a target top. Um, it doesn't work. I've heard from many body shops and different professionals that have run into people that have tried this on their cars, and over time, the car just bends itself to death. 
uh, it probably wouldn't be a massive problem for us, like, because so, like, this car's lifetime is pretty short at this point. But uh, regardless of that, I'd like to do this kind of right. So what we're gonna do is we have a bunch of this uh, one inch steel bar. It's super, super strong, super rigid that uh, we built some other things out of. What, what I'm gonna go ahead and do is go from the, the old roof line uh, to our A-pillar line. That's gonna give us, uh, I think, plenty of what it'll take to relieve a little bit of that pressure uh, for the car bending in on itself. Uh, and then we'll also be welding up the doors and that door crack will, which will really, really add a lot of structural rigidity. That'll get us back to just compl being completely fine. So I'm gonna go um, across here like this, and then we're gonna go across here like this, because on a lot of boats that you see, you see that like top bar thing uh, where people put speakers, and I think that's where they, they strap on like the wakeboarding rope. I'm not really sure. I'm not a boatist, but um, so I think this will be a cool spot to put some stuff on here, as well as actually for safety, this is kind of a two person car now um, in the terrible event of a rollover. If we have a bar coming across here and a bar going across here, that should add some safety, um, enough to make me feel safe. And then um, later on in the build, we can go from here to here as well. So I wanna keep the center part nice and open so when this thing sinks, I can just swim out the top. But uh, I wanna keep some structural rigidity as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and weld in these supports. Alright, phase one of the welding in the supports is done. So they're welded up into the front on uh, the roof rail on both those sides. And these are just uh, welded as far back as you can really get underneath there into a diff couple different pieces. But what we're going to do later in the build is we'll come back with some steel bar, lay it flat across there, weld it all the way around here, and then weld it to this. So it'll give a bigger footprint for that. Um, these are welded up real well on both sides and you can see on the inside and the outside to the A-pillar. So they're really, really strong. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna uh, place this bar across here. I'm gonna do two, uh, two thick, um, mainly for just the width of it to have a bigger surface area to mount other things. Uh, I think it'll look cool too. So that's gonna go, excuse me, sorry. That's gonna go, yeah, across here. So I'm gonna go ahead and weld that up real quick and then we'll go ahead and come back through and clean up all the welds. <laughs> All right, well, we've essentially built a roof rack. Uh, this went pretty well. Uh, I feel good about this. Uh, my welds have really improved uh, since using the TIG welder and practicing so much with the TIG welder. It really helped with the flux core MIG welder. But it's flux core, so there's a lot of slag. So I'm going to grab the grinder and I'm going to come in here and clean all this stuff up and then we'll throw a coat of paint on it. painted up looking OEM as fuck it's no more JDM life it's the OEM life that's OEM convertible style I'm gonna get that that last little bar in there somehow I'm gonna, I'm gonna throw that in there later in the build but I want to move on to some other stuff but before then I want to show you guys all the sexy sexy gloss no uh, before then I got these two key tags off of this build. Uh, this was originally uh, the plan B on the plan B key ring and we ended up using it as a door pull on this. And this was originally on the BMW key ring and we pulled it off and ended up using it as a door pull. Uh, so these two key tags go pretty far back. Um, we no longer have door latching mechanisms anyways. Um, so we don't need door pulls, so I wanna give this away. So if you want these, uh, jump onto our Facebook page. There'll be a link to this video. Jump on there, hit like on that video link, and that will qualify you for these key tags, one of them. Um, I'll give both of these away to two different people um, that I will pick randomly from the like list. So get on that. All right, moving on to the next thing. All right, the next thing I wanna do is, this car is too low to be a boat, so I wanna raise it up. So I got some springs, but these aren't BMW springs. These are springs off of a Jeep. 
<laughs> these are springs off a of Jeep Wrangler. Uh, so I have no knowledge of whether or not these will fit, but I think we can make them fit. I think if we try hard enough, anything will fit. I got these on Craigslist for like 50 bucks, so I just want to give it a shot. So I'm going to run down to the uh, hardware store and get a spring compressor, and then we're going to pull the front up on the Beamer, and we're going to try and throw some Jeep springs on our BMW to lift it. Right? Jeeps are higher than BMWs, so this, this should work. Mm-hmm. All right, small amount of struggle, but I was able to get this strut off of the car. So this is the strut with the uh, lowered spring on there. I don't know what the stock springs look like. And this is the Jeep spring um, up next to it. So I, I still have no idea what I'm doing here. I'm kind of flying in the dark. If you look, the, uh, the metal that's in the spring coil is a little bit smaller than this one, but they're much uh, more tightly wrapped, which is gonna make a stiffer spring. Overall, I have zero idea what the load difference is supposed to be on these things and, and at all how this is supposed to work. So we're completely flying in the dark, but here's my strategy, here's my thought. I'm gonna grab the spring compressor, I'm gonna compress this thing down, I'm gonna pull the top hat off, then I'm gonna see if I can test fit this inside there. If I can get it to sit snugly in there, then I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut some of, I'm gonna cut this spring, because obviously this whole spring isn't gonna fit in here. I'm gonna cut this spring um, where I think that after I compress it, I can put the top hat back on and uh, I'll cut the spring, compress it back down or compress it down and try and bolt the top hat back onto here and then put it on the car. So this is just total trial and error. Worst case scenario, I destroy these Jeep springs, which I really don't care about. And then I have to put those ones back on the car. Uh, but best case scenario, we ended up with a lifted uh, BMW. So uh, definitely don't try this at home. And uh, use a spring compressor whenever you're playing with these things. Don't just take the bolt off of here. Everything shoots up and might blow your brains out. All right, well, progress is a little slow moving, but progress nonetheless. So you can see that we've got the compressor on this one and we're compressing those lower coils quite a bit um, versus the standard height of that one. And this is what the stock spring looked like. So we're just compressing that down and I'm gonna go ahead and make my cut now, right about here, right after that compression. I'm gonna cut here and then we'll continue to compress it down until I can get a hat on there. But so far it's actually coming together. I think it's actually gonna work. Ha <laughs> All right, I've done it. Uh, it's not the best engineered thing I've ever done, but I definitely think it'll work. Now we just gotta see if it has the right amount of lift. I managed to actually get the spring to sit in the bottom piece and the top piece, but that actually means that it's a little bit sideways on the shock tower. Uh, but I don't really care. I'm really excited to give this a try. So I'm gonna go ahead and mount this back up in the car and then we'll lower it down and see uh, how high the car sits after we've got this new spring in there. Down for the first time you guys are going to see this with me the results the shock tower looks a little bit close to the wheel for some reason but i think everything's where it was oem so i'm not going to worry about that slow it down everybody cross your fingers think lifted bmw on jeep springs how wonderful let's hope it actually works Hey, hey. <laughs> we actually got quite a bit of gap. Okay, so let's see, how do I measure this? All right, so after measuring, it looks like we have four and a half inches uh, of space between the fender and the sidewall over here, and we have two or less on that side. So it looks like what we did was we got ourselves two and a half inches of lift out of this thing, and some nice stiff suspension on this side. And in turn, that actually lifted up the back a little bit too. So we got back springs coming for the back, but uh, that's gonna be, have to be done tomorrow. But uh, I'm stoked, man, this totally worked out. <laughs> what a ridiculous idea to have actually work out. So uh, I'm happy. We got a BMW on some Jeep Springs and uh, that's getting us a lot more ground clearance than we had. All right, the last thing I wanna do before I get out of here for the day is uh, I've decided I wanna continue this line coming down right over to here. I found this piece of real awesome structural, real thick sheet metal back here. So I can bend something around and then this is just gonna slot right in here. So I'll have it slot in, I'm gonna angle cut this so it matches up with this bar right here. And then I'm gonna weld everything up together and throw a coat of paint on it. Feels right, yeah. I can only say that it feels right. It feels right, it feels right, yeah. I can only 
say that it feels right braces on and I think it, lo it looks really good it's gonna add even more structure to it and uh, I think it just helps the overall body line um, so it doesn't end up looking too much like a pickup truck I think in the next episode we'll go ahead and cut this whole middle section out um, so it's just kind of a flat bottom going all the way back but overall I think it looks great I'm stoked on how our suspension worked in the front I can't wait to do it all the rest of the way around and uh, I really think this is coming together uh, better than I could have hoped I made it convertible in one weekend all right, well that is a wrap on phase one, the, the first weekend of work on our 100,000 subscriber celebration boat building experience. Uh, thank you guys very much for tuning in. Uh, do not miss an episode coming up. We have uh, flotation, how we're gonna actually make this car float. We have uh, more suspension stuff coming, a couple other things that are surprises. It's all gonna be good, it's all gonna be really fun, and hopefully this thing's gonna look really cool and be really cool in the end. We have some fun stuff to figure out, like how we're gonna propel ourselves in the water, how we're gonna steer, um, all sorts of great stuff. So I hope you guys are excited. This is like the most fun I've had in a while working on these things, so um, I'm really excited. I think this was a great idea for 100,000 subscriber um, celebration. So we have seven days from today uh, to finish this car, and seven days from now it will be floating. So there's uh, this episode you're watching, there's one more episode, and then the next episode we will be floating. So lots of work to be done, it's gonna be really fun. Thank you guys very much for tuning in. You can find us at uh, facebook.com slash bs for build We're bs for build on Instagram, and we are at bs for buildcom where you can find all of our merch. Uh, we got shirts, we have hats like this one, we have key tags like the ones I'm giving away. Remember, jump on Facebook, hit like, that'll enter you in the drawing to get one of those two free key tags that have bs for build history woven into every dirt stain on them. Thanks for, uh, thanks for tuning in, guys. I hope you're enjoying it. Let me know. The Lotus Evora is fine. Things are moving along great. I've found a roof. I've got all sorts of great stuff is happening with that. But this is just something that we wanted to take some time to have a lot of fun on um, and do something special for our 100,000 subscriber mark. Uh, we're probably getting really close to 100,000 subs. Uh, if you're watching this right now and you're not subscribed, hit the subscribe button. Let's get us there because it's going to be really embarrassing to be sitting in this uh, car boat thing and not sailing. We're not going to sail until we hit that number. Thank you guys very much for watching. Please remember to like and obviously subscribe. Peace. Come, come, come on.